Hi, this is Larry Siegel with TV Worth Watching, sitting in for David B. and Cooley, who's languishing on assignment. We're doing Best TV tomorrow, and tomorrow is Wednesday, February 17th, and the big story in TV land is the big man himself, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and NBC's new series, Young Rock. It's a new sitcom, which is kind of a mashup between This Is Us, The Wonder Years, and Disney Plus's Diary of a Future President. It's 2032 and The Rock is running for president and he wants us to get to know him better. So during an interview, he talks about life's lessons from three different periods of his life, when he was a 10 year old, when he was a teen, and when he was a freshman at the University of Miami. And each of the time periods is played by a different actor. It's not necessarily TV worth watching, but hey, it's The Rock. Who doesn't love The Rock? What we really want to point you to is over at PBS. Now in its 47th season of Nova, it's showing a new episode. It's called Beyond the Elements, Life. And it asks the most fundamental question of all, why is there life on Earth? You'll get volcanoes, photosynthesis, the enzyme known as Rubisco, and oh my God, the Krebs cycle. So tune in, it's episodes like this that make us realize why life on this rock is so precious. No, not this rock, this rock. population growth, with changing economics, we expect by 2050 the world will need to be producing about 60% more food than it is today. The goal of the right project is to make crops more productive. We're doing that by engineering photosynthesis to make it more efficient. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use sunlight energy to make our food. We have been aware that it's inefficient for a long time. What there hasn't been awareness of is that we might be able to change that. We believe that by engineering photosynthesis, we could double the potential productivity of our crops. We start with computer modeling. There are literally billions of possible permutations of how we modify the plant. So the computer is essential for telling us what are likely to be the best bets. One is speeding up the generation of the molecule that photosynthesis uses to capture carbon dioxide. The second is when a leaf goes from sun to shade, it takes some time for it to adjust to that change in light. So what we've done is found ways in which we can speed up that adjustment. The third is to engineer more efficient ways of metabolizing the products of a process called photorespiration. In the right project, we're looking at photosynthesis a little bit like a car production line. You have a thousand workers on that line. Where do you put the workers to maximize productivity? We use tobacco as a test bed. If it works, then we go on to the crops we really care about. Rice, soybean, maize, cowpea, cassava, which are used in the poorest countries. In Africa, about 500 million people are dependent on cassava growth. If we get increased yields for cassava, they can grow more to be able to feed more their families. And also, they're gonna have more to sell to the market. And then with that, they can get more money to meet household needs. What has to be done is more testing. So you're really looking at 20 years before the technologies which will enable higher productivity will be available at scale. We are going to face struggles with food in the future. It might not help my generation, but I'm sure it's going to help the next ones. 